Hello, Chris. How are you? Nice to talk to you. Yeah, you too, Joel. Thank you. Look, I was having a think about what we'd talk about on the interview, and I was thinking about the life of a veterinarian. It must be an extremely difficult job. I don't know how you can be an expert on on all things animals, because one minute you'd be treating a turtle, the next minute a goldfish, the next minute a horse. It must be extremely involved being a vet. What a life. Yeah, you're right. I mean, it is, it's, it's different. Right? That was what drew me into the job initially was the fact that you had this, this great variety of potential patients. But what is, is certainly an upside can, can be a downside because, I mean, the, the charter of, of responsibility says that whatever walks through that door, you've got to treat. And, and sometimes you can get some, uh, some rather interesting challenges. I mean, I've, I've had it just recently, an alligator, um, fish, uh, snakes, all sorts of things that you wouldn't think you get taught too much at uni. You don't get taught too much at uni. And, and so you, you have to adapt your skills and, and sometimes um, think in, in interesting ways. Now, be honest, Chris, is there, is there really a, a bit of a bond between veterinarians out there that you, you sort of look down your noses a bit at doctors <laughs> saying, well, you know, you guys have only got to learn the uh, the anatomy of uh, the, human, the human body. We've got to learn all these different bodies. <laughs> you know, I used to be at, at uni. I remember in my first year at, at vet school, there was this T-shirt that was made up that said... Um, Real doctors treat more than one species, and I, I never bought one because I thought, you know what, I, I don't really need to get the medical profession offside. And I think, look, they they do an incredible job, and and they, their knowledge of certain areas is, is far beyond ours. That's, that's, there's no doubt about that. I, I think what the secret to, to being a vet and treating all these different animals is the the way I do it anyway is that I break up all the whole animal kingdom into basically eight models, and so. Your cow is one model, your dog is one model, your cat is another model. And all these models are, are how, how that particular type of animal works. Now, then I consider an elephant to just be like a cow. It's the cow model, but with a really long trunk. Um, mm. That's the very simplified version of, of being a vet in, in 30 seconds. A lot of a lot of people. Yeah, well, I suppose that that's the uh, the the complicated, simple way of looking at it. I suppose <laughs> <laughs> it is. But, but otherwise, you, you can get a bit baffled. And, and really, all all animals and and people really work in very much a similar way. We almost have exactly the same number of bones in our body, same position of the bones. We're just a dog that really walks on its back legs, and we you know we have a liver like they do, kidneys, brain, heart. It, it all works the same way. So you can't you got to be careful not to get too baffled with the with the potential differences in how they look. A lot of young people uh, who love pets say they want to be vets. So I've heard so many people say to me, you know, you say, what do you want to do when you grow up? They say, I want to be a vet. What's the life of a vet like? I suppose it would be, there'd be such great rewards, but I suppose it would be heartbreaking at times as well. Yeah, I should I should say straight up, I was never one of those kids. I actually, um, as a kid, my, my dad was a vet and still is a vet. And I used to hear him going out to, to calls at all hours of the night. And I remember thinking, wow, that is the world's worst job. And then I, I always loved animals but could never see myself being a vet until I realized why you, you become a vet. And it's because you do love animals. You get a real buzz out of, out of helping them. And, uh, and the reality of being a, being a vet is what I said before. It is long hours. It, it's late nights. It, it's been called out of, out of your mate's birthday party when you're having the best night you've had in a month. You know, it's, it, it, it sometimes is about making sacrifices. But but it is also about the huge rewards that come from that. And I think sometimes the greatest rewards come out of the greatest sacrifices. And, and to be able to help people and, and animals in need is, is a real buzz. And you notice I mentioned people there. It's, it's, I really do believe that being a vet is, is about as much about treating people and managing people as it is about treating mm. and managing animals because mm. they're the ones that tell a story. They're the ones that uh, who have the emotional uh, difficulties in, in dealing with things and you spend as much time counselling them as you do the animals. Yeah, well, actually, that leads me on to my next question, a good mm. lead-in. Are we killing our animals with kindness? Yeah, it's, it's a really good question. I think certainly in the last 20 years, our pets have changed. You know, their, their role in the family have, have, has changed. Uh, you look at 20 years ago, and they were, they were sort of more of a backyard accessory. They were something that yeah. we, we we threw kitchen scraps to, leftovers to, and, and they were just there. Um, whereas now they're they're a big part of the family. They they have names that aren't, are no longer Rover and Tiger. They have names like Chloe and and Max and Jesse and these sort of ones, which are, are human names. They almost have a human qualities to go with them. Mm. They, they sleep inside, they sleep on beds, they get fed proper meals at meal times. And um, the consequence of that, though, is that sometimes they get a bit confused and they aren't too sure where they fit in and they're not sure if they're person or if they're animal. And, and that's where the, the killing with kindness sometimes happens. Huge, huge numbers of animals are now getting behavioural issues and anxiety issues because 
when their owners leave for work in the morning, they're like, well, hang on, if, if I am a member of the family, how come I'm not going with you? How, why am I being tossed out into the backyard and why am I being left alone? And they suddenly have this disconnect between life as an animal and life as a human and, and they don't really know where they fit in and they bark and they scratch and they, they chew things up, they wee in the house, they, they escape, they you know, have all these problems and, and they're, they're, I guess, the, 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 that we have to watch out for. You have to be realistic and, and certainly treat the pet like, uh, like you, you're going to treat it for their, their whole life and, and, uh, and probably treat them with a, a degree of realism too. Dr. Brown, how did you make the, the big jump onto our television screens? And um, look, I think you're, you're a natural at it. How are you finding the world of TV? <laughs> yeah, how I got started was it was an interesting one. I, um, I'd, I'd been working for about two or three years in, in a vet clinic, obviously in, in Bondi here, and, and uh, was at a, a pub actually on a, on a, I think a Friday night and was at the bar ordering a few drinks and had a pretty strange week with a few bizarre cases and just got talking to the girl that was next to me about my week in the clinic and and uh, she said, oh, what do, what do you do? I said, I'm a vet. And anyway, this guy was behind me, overheard me and, and came up to me about an hour later and said, look, I just wanted to say, obviously you were trying to pick up that girl in the bar, that line about you being a vet, I don't know where you pulled that one from, but it was brilliant. I think she bought it. And I sort of laughed and went, well, that's, that's exactly what I am. And, uh, and he's went, no, 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 you're not. You know, you're working in banking, you're in finance, whatever, and walked off. And anyway, came up to me again later and said, look, if you are a vet, here's my card. I want you to call me tomorrow. And he was a, an agent or a, a media manager that worked for um, for a television network. And yeah. it, um, it it all went from there. So, yeah, and in, in terms of how I find it, look, I, I love it. I, I do find it a huge challenge to combine medical information and, and, uh, and I guess, convey ideas about animals and, and how best to treat them into an interesting package that, that people are actually going to engage with. That's that's a real challenge and to um you know, to, to not talk in, in medical terms and, and also make it interesting and entertaining because after all that's that's why we have pets is because they, they brighten up our lives yeah. and make life better. So yep. I think the the information surrounding them should be should be like them. It should be fun, it should be entertaining.